here are the five ways that I push myself past my comfort zone. Number one, I admit that I'm not alone. One of the things that keeps many of us inside of our comfort zones is the fact that we think we're the only ones who have ever done this before and we fear going out there and being all alone. If you can tell yourself that you are not alone and you are not the only one who's ever done this before, you stand a good chance of being able to build the courage to go past your current comfort zone. One of the ways I do that is look for people specifically who have done what it is that I'm seeking to do, talk to them about it, and almost always I find out that they too had the same fear. When I see that they were able to overcome it, it gives me the courage and boldness to be able to overcome my own fear of moving outside of that comfort zone. Number two is I admit to myself that my personality is not a life sentence. So often we think that we're born a certain way and then that being born a certain way with a certain temperament or a certain personality is just the way we are. And we say things to ourselves like, well, people like me don't do things like that. That's a complete lie. The fact is our personalities are malleable and actually they grow over time and change over time as we expose ourselves to new experiences. The classic case in point for me is every personality test I've ever taken, whether it be Meyer-Briggs, DISC, uh, any other thing, always indicates that I'm the type of personality that is an introvert or has an introvert mentality. And what's funny about that is Everybody who knows me across the spectrum kind of laughs and chuckles when I tell them I'm really an introvert and I find myself trying to convince them that I am an introvert when everything that I do and say and how I interact shows the contrary. What I've realized is that early on in my life I may have been an introvert but because of what I've exposed myself to and because of the different opportunities that I've taken advantage of in going outside of my comfort zone, I've been able to alter and shape how I think I need to interact and becoming an extrovert might not be the top of my list or a thing that I always have strive, strive to do but it is something that I've been able to embrace. The third thing I do is reject the lies of hindsight bias. Hindsight bias is misremembering the past in our own favor. For me, that looks like placing myself as a central character in every memory that I have. You know, we all have that experience where we re replay memories in our mind like we're watching an old video, right? And as we're replaying those videos or those memories, we tend to place ourselves as the central or main character in all of those memories. When we do that, we misconstrue the reality of that memory and we kind of reconstruct it based on a faulty assumption. That assumption is you're the main character. What we can do to help us get outside of our comfort zones is re-watch those videos, but place yourself as a stage extra outside and you're watching what has occurred and everyone else in the memory are the central characters and when we do that we see a perspective and we learn something about ourselves and about what actually happened that we didn't see the first time and when we do that we're far more likely to be able to stretch beyond our comfort zones because it forces us to think in a way in a and, and use a capacity that we normally don't do and we begin to see things from other people's perspectives it helps us go beyond where we currently see our limits as being. The fourth thing I do is I try to seek clarity over focus and foresight over fantasy. And for me, that's huge because so much of the time we spend convincing ourselves to go beyond our comfort zone has to do with focusing, focusing, focusing. And really what we need is less focus and more clarity. Now that might sound contrived, but that's really the truth. Focus is an over-concentration on something. We become myopic on one thing and one thing only, where clarity forces us or requires us to step back and take in a bigger scope. I like to describe that as a difference between foresight and fantasy. See, most of the time when we engage in pushing ourselves beyond our comfort zone or entertaining the idea of going beyond our comfort zone, we think of it in terms of a fantasy. I see this picture of the future, this ideal picture of where I'd like to be or what I'd like to become or what I'd like to do. And then if you're anything like me, I see that picture and I immediately tell myself, that's cool, but I can't because. 
And it's that I can't because clause that makes me realize I'm dealing in fantasy. Every time I see something in my future that I want to achieve or attain, and I come back and tell myself I can't because it's a red flag for me that I know I'm dealing in fantasy. On the other hand, when I see something in my future that looks desirable or something that I'd like to do, and I begin to think about what steps I need to take in order to make that happen, then I know I'm dealing with foresight. And foresight is so much more important when it comes to pushing our comfort zones than fantasy. The fifth and final thing that I do to push myself beyond my comfort zone is lean into my core values. And for me, that's really important because I believe that I'm greater than the sum of my parts. And I believe you are greater than the sum of your parts too. And if we're only ever thinking of ourselves as a consequence or a result of the past decisions we make, we forget about the future and the anticipatory aspect of our identity. You see, you're not just where you're at in life because of every decision you made yesterday or in the past. You're also where you're at in life because of what you are meant to do tomorrow and in the future. So when you have both of those things in operation, the past pushing you into your present and the future pulling you into your present, we can truly understand what's really important. And when we lean into that core value of my identity is greater than the sum of my parts, it encourages us and helps us, at least it does for me, move beyond what I'm currently comfortable in and push myself a little bit harder to go beyond the comfort zone that I'm familiar with. So hopefully those five steps can be helpful for you as you push beyond your comfort zones.